Hey, my name is Dean Lamb, and I play in the technical death metal band Archspire from here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And this is my brand new YouTube series where I take guitar lessons from incredible musicians. I, it's insane. And on this episode, Rafael Trujillo. So I first heard about Raphael from his work with Obscura, and he just, the composition and the solos that he wrote on this album, just insane. It was probably my most listened to album of that year. Since then, he's written and performed in his band Obsidious, as well as in the band Doth, and also he does great educational stuff on Patreon and YouTube and all that. In this lesson, we covered a bunch of different topics like uh, warm-up routines, uh, how Raphael uh, prepared for an absolutely massive gig, uh, his influences, stuff that both of us are working on, and a whole bunch more stuff. If you want to watch the entire unedited hour-long lesson, consider becoming a member of the channel where you'll also get full guitar transcriptions for absolutely everything that both of us play in this video. And once again, thank you so much to Sweetwater for sponsoring this series. If you want to see my entire gear list of the stuff that they have that I play, uh, check out the description. It's it's right in there. There's a link in there. Uh, click on it if you want to check out uh, what kind of guitar uh, processors I use or even just kind of whatever strap locks I use. Just everything that I play that they offer, it's in there. And now I present to you my lesson with Rafael Trujillo. It's very normal to get things up to speed and like to start slow and getting faster and faster. But also I think it's very important to start right away with a very high tempo. Let's just do an example. Uh, if we want to play that at a certain point, it's much more efficient to go to the faster tempo right away and just that little burst. One thing which is also very important is that you are aware of what kind of grid you're in. Either you're playing 16th notes, because then it's just one, two, three, four, one. If you're playing uh, triplets, it's obviously one, two, three, one, especially for your right hand. It should be, because if you're playing fast stuff, it's simply not possible to like think of every note. It's easier if you feel that. I'm training myself basically to feel how it feels playing 16th note at, I don't know, 220 BPM or something right. like that. Right, right. So, and so you're thinking about, because I, I talked to Steve in Toronto a little bit about this last lesson, talking about chunking a little bit, when you take a lot of movements and you squish it down into one movement, basically. So, I mean, the example I gave him was, I think about each one of those strings as a chunk. And I think about that entire thing as six chunks put together. I was working on something that you put up uh, today, that, uh, that sort of bursty thing. That... So that's, it's sort of like a Paul Gilberty kind of thing. I was doing an outside picking, and then I realized you were doing inside picking, at least starting with the oh, downstroke. Really? Yeah, and I, I just... something outside? I was trying it, and then I realized inside picking, yeah, it's obviously faster, but inside picking in that sense creates a little bit more of uh, chance for swiping strings that you don't necessarily mean to. So you have to do a bit more, at least I find, a bit more two-way pixelating when you do inside picking for something like that. H have you experienced that? Like, are you an inside picker, outside picker? Does it matter? Does it just depend on the situation? I think inside is much, way easier for me. Actually. Nice. Okay, cool. When I write, I don't really think of that stuff. I do whatever sounds good, and then I just try to make it work. That's kind of my approach. I mean, for me, alternate picking in general is such an important thing. It's like the basis of everything. If you have a good alternate picking technique, everything else is way easier. It doesn't make sense to like start learning sweeping, but don't know how to uh, alternate pick, uh, in my opinion. The string changes, yeah, those are, are making it things difficult in my opinion <laughs> yeah. like because on one string you can like uh, you can play quite fast on like just one note even i've had that experience with a lot of like uh, students like they are fast that i'm like holy shit like yeah. i didn't expect that but on one note but then when it comes to like playing a scale or something it's like a total mess would you still do outside even do even though like the click is is there where, yeah. where it actually is. Yeah, that's how I in instinctively sort of learned it. I've always been sort of a more of an outside picker anyway for some reason. Oh, wow. I think that, honestly, it came from when I was doing... 
like just Paul Gilbert's shit. I always started with an upstroke, you know, and and I think I think a big reason is because downstroke. Like I mean, I can do both ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure that you're yeah equally capable of doing both ways. I'm guessing. I think that when I was younger, I was like, no pull offs, no legato, must pick all notes. That's the only way to do it. And I think you probably had a similar kind of thing. Like at one point in your life, you were like, if I can't pick every note of something, then I can't play it. It's got to be. Right. You want to be able to pick every note, and then you can choose whether or not you're going to. And I mean, that kind of takes me to to this. Uh, section that I was looking at from from the song Ethereal Skies. I, maybe you know the part. It's um, 516, 416, 516, 316, 216, 416. The time signatures go crazy, and it's like 16th notes. Oh, yeah. Are you all... T- if you know the part if uh, off the top of your head, um, I'm not expecting you to play the whole thing, but what I think you're probably doing, and I've never seen you do it, is alternate picked string skipping all over the place. Yeah, that's that's what it is, basically. What is very special about this part, that this part actually repeats, but it's an odd number. So you got to play the whole thing, but then starting with an upstroke, actually. <laughs> but then the second time, at the very end, you, you get out with a downstroke again. But um, that's that part. So you did that on purpose to mess with yourself or mess with people trying to learn it, or is it just, just how it came out? <laughs> it was definitely not to like um, to think of, uh, uh, people are going to have fun playing this. <laughs> um, it's, <laughs> in the beginning, it wasn't even like meant to be played on the, on the guitar. I was like, I want to have this thing maybe in the background or something, like synth or something like that, maybe, mm. an arpeggiator. But then... During this, the writing process, I was like, I love this line so much. I want to play it. And then I just tried to learn that. Do you remember like a small snippet of it? Like a couple, like a bar or something like that? Of that? Uh, let... <laughs> That's the beginning. And then... Um... Actually, I don't, I don't well, really that, remember Well, that's fine. It. But the idea is crazy two-way pick slanting. <laughs> Um, holy shit yeah that's fair no i I wasn't expecting you to rip it out full speed or anything i was was just curious what your right hand kind of looked like when you were doing something like that because it's so dexterous trying to navigate all the strings is like holy shit yeah because it goes down it's like um like something like that like i move my right hand like quite a lot because i always want to have the same angle totally string yeah so when I play up here, I have my wrist here. If I play it down there, I have it here. I'm really interested in the stuff that Tim Miller does. He was also he was actually one of my teachers as well for um, for a while. But like the two one two thing, like I really love that. Um, and I'm trying to find different ways play, using that thing. So instead of playing the seventh, I'm playing the ninth. Um, um, here, uh, or instead of playing the root, actually, playing the ninth, or or even uh, a pentatonic, a, a standard pentatonic line can sound like this. It's pretty interesting a line. Um, wow. And these kind of things, I try to integrate that into my vocabulary, and that's basically my practice. Where can people find you? What what's what's the next thing for Raphael? If you are into like educational stuff, I do all that on my Patreon page, so you can go there. And it's all in my link tree. If you go on my Instagram page, um, you can just click on the link tree and and get that. There is actually new stuff coming up with Darth. There's an, uh, another single coming out in March. There will be another single in April and an actual album out after that. So be prepared for that. That's the next thing for me. I got to do all the playthroughs for those songs. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I do next. That's, oh, sweet. That's your next job. All right. Well, I can't wait to hear it, man. Thank you so much for doing this with me. And I, I think that we uh, we touched some, on, on some really cool stuff and, and I can't thank you enough for doing it because I... Uh, I think you're I think you're just great. Man, thanks a lot for having me. <laughs> All right, cool man. Thanks so much.